Welcome to my Tantric Winter Meditation Journey. After last week's video, I've had a lot of people writing in to ask, how did I get past my personal obstacle to following Tantra Vidya? You know, when I said that if there was a viewpoint that was totally opposite to mine and I found that really hard to accept, how did I get past that? Well, we believe that within us we have 52 shaktis, 52 energies that we can arouse through different types of meditation to clear our blockages, whether the blockage is mental or physical or emotional. But we can find that energy within us, we can find that strength within us to clear away those blockages. Now, I'm very happy to share this meditation with you. It's a, it's a great meditation, very powerful, because not only does it help you to calm your anger, but it actually rebalances your mind. So it's really fantastic, but I have to warn you, it is an extremely complicated meditation to follow. As a matter of fact, I found it so hard that it had to be given to me in a separate version altogether. And I will share both these versions with you, of course, but I'm telling you this because I want you to know that Tantra is not easy. A lot of people think that they can just sort of read it once and start on it. It is very complex and it needs a lot of concentration and time but it is so worth it in the end. So the meditation. As I said, there are two separate versions of it, and I'm going to give you both the complex, the traditional one, as well as the easier one that was devised for me by Binama. Now this meditation takes place at night. So it is the moon's energy that impact this particular meditation. In the first one, the traditional one, you visualize it taking place in your crown chakra. So it happens over here on your head and you visualize two lotus flowers, one on top of the other. The lotus flowers are fully bloomed and they have eight petals each. That's an important part to remember. Each lotus has eight petals. They're placed one on top of the other, but in such a way that you can see all 16 petals. And once you've placed your lotus flowers, you visualize a circular disc pressing them down. The disc is silver in color and it is slightly convex and you visualize this pressing them down so that it's almost restricting them. Next, you visualize the lotus flower starting to move. So the lower one will move in a clockwise direction, the upper one in an anti-clockwise direction. They will move quite slowly and with difficulty because the disc on top of them is quite heavy. It's restricting them. The lower lotus flower represents your point of view and the eight petals represent the slightly divergent perspectives around your own point of view. The upper one represents the opposite point of view. And again, the eight petals represent the slightly divergent perspectives to the opposite point of view. So each petal represents some aspect of that point of view. And as they start to move, each petal at some point or the other will line up with your third eye, which means that that's the perspective that your mind has held at some point or the other, that it was part of your thought process. Now, as I said, this is an extremely powerful meditation because it really brings home to you that your mind is capable of encompassing everything, even if consciously you feel you cannot but it is also an extremely complicated one because each petal represents a slightly divergent point of view, just slightly different to the previous one. And you have to be able to remember which petal represents what, which one is coming in because they're moving, the lotus flowers are moving in different directions. So which one is coming into the third eye at what time and at what pace and so on. So it's just really, really difficult. And so, as I said, Binama gave me a slightly simpler version of this one. Now, it's simpler because basically we draw it out and the visuals just make it easier to follow. Normally, this one is drawn in the soil. It's made in a very large circle. I'm just going to show you on a piece of paper. So first you draw a large circle. Then you draw a line across it. This point on the line represents your point of view. This one represents the directly opposite point of view. Then we draw another line across. Now this point is the halfway point between what you believe and what is the opposite point of view to yours. And this point is the halfway point between the opposite person's idea coming up to yours. Now you might think that the two halfway points are exactly the same, 
but it's not. There's a slight difference because of the thinking patterns. Think of it like the phases of the moon. So you have the same phase of the moon, but it's slightly different when the moon is waxing and it's slightly different when the moon is waning. Next, you draw two more lines to dissect the circle. Now this point represents midway between what you originally thought and your halfway point. This one is midway between the halfway point and the extreme opposite and so on. You basically get the idea. So you keep dividing the circle till you have 16 divisions. And at each point, you write down the slight shift in perspective. And you eventually end up with a circle which includes every little aspect of the same thought. And it is so powerful because this is when you realize looking at it, that there is no such thing as you and the opposite side. Everything is one, it is all in one space. And once you can realize that, you can get past almost any obstacle. As I said before, it is an extremely powerful meditation. Not only will it calm your anger, but it rebalances your mind. And I think that is far more important because that is the basis of all of your Shakti. Even though it is complicated and time consuming, if you're going to do it, do it for yourself, just for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are the center of your own universe. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next one.